Let's learn how to use ADC in STM32 microcontroller. First, we will going to learn about a single channel ADC to learn to interface a single analog sensor and then we will going to look at a multi-channel ADC. Then in the project, we will going to interface LDR sensor which is a light dependent resistor. So we will going to measure the light intensity of a surrounding. When the light intensity goes below certain level, then the LED lights up, otherwise the LED stays off. Thanks to Altium Software for sponsoring this video. Altium is all-in-one platform for all the needs of PCB design. The cloud-based Altium 365 offers seamless collaboration between engineers along with version control capabilities. Please visit the link in the video description to learn more about Altium 365. With built-in octoparts, engineers can quickly search electronic components with accurate and complete data for millions of electronic components. You can download free trial with the link given in a video description. Also, you can sign up with the link altium.com forward slash yt slash binary updates. So let's create a fresh new project. Go to file on top left corner. Click on new. Click on STM32 project. And this will basically take few minutes to set up and configure the project for us. So we have to select the part STM32 F446RE. That's our microcontroller. So select and then select the STM32 F446RE nuclear board. Click on next and then we have to give the name to the project. I would like to keep it very simple. I would name the project as a ADC analog to digital converter. And then I'm going to click on finish because everything looks fine. So as you can see, the project is configured and it has presented us pinout and configuration. You can see all the pins on STM32 microcontroller. And if I can make a little bit of space, you can see all these options where we can set up. So as you know that STM32 nuclear board uses a 16 megahertz internal clock. So we don't have to do any setting for the clock. We will jump directly into the analog section. So let me expand analog and you can see there are three ADC. ADC one is the one that we are using. And since we want to connect one sensor to a PA0 pin, that's an LDR sensor that we will going to connect to the PA0 pin we need a one channel into the ADC one so if I check this box here in zero that's a PA0 pin so as soon as I check this box you can see the PA0 pin is selected here on the chip if I can zoom you can see PA0 pin okay and down below you can see there are a parameter settings shows up but before going into that you can see there are almost like a 16 input analog inputs out there for us and there are some more inputs for internal temperature sensor data to read and then battery to monitor and all other things but i don't want to jump into that all things so let's just stay with the in zero which is channel zero adc channel zero that is associated with pa0 pin so let me expand this to help you see more about this so adc configuration the mode is independent mode the clock prescaler is divided by two we are okay with this the resolution is 12 bit because the adc in stm32 microcontroller is a 12 bit adc which take a 15 adc clock cycles to make the conversion and then we have the data alignment scan conversion mode continuous conversion mode these are the settings we don't have to touch especially for this kind of simple application where we have only one analog sensor ldr that we want to connect to the microcontroller and read the data so this is maybe probably i will show you a scan conversion mode in our next video lesson where i will show you multi-channel adc where we will connect to multiple sensors and read the data from the microcontroller okay so this is not needed to be uh, changed here in this project and then you can see there is a EOC flag here so end of conversion at the end of single channel conversion so this is basically what happens is whenever the ADC channel converts the ADC data into the digital format into the microcontroller then it generates this EOC flag EOC flag basically helps us understand the conversion is completed end of conversion so we don't have to touch that as well but I just wanted to help you understand what it is and then the number of conversion is one that is okay then because we are using only one channel you can see the rank is one and the channel is a channel zero as i said channel zero is basically a pa0 pin and then sampling time is three cycle here as you can see it takes a 15 adc clock cycles to sample the data so i would like to keep the sampling time as let's say a 15 cycle at least you need a 15 cycles so that is all we have to change into the adc parameter configuration once this is done adc configuration then i want you to take into the connectivity section and then we will going to select the user 2 ur2 if you have seen my previous video about UART on STM32 microcontroller where I have talked more detail about this UART2 protocol. If you have not watched it, I have given the link in the video description so you can watch that. Otherwise, in this project, we are going to use this UART protocol to print the ADC data means a sensor data light intensity value onto the serial terminal software. So we will be configuring UART2 and the reason we are using UART2 is because UART2 is associated with the USB port on STM32 nuclear board. So we don't need any external USB OTT 
ttl converter or something like that so just make use of the usb port on to the nuclear board itself so let's just click on drop down menu select asynchronous because we are using into asynchronous mode of uart right uart and then the baud rate is 115200 i'm happy with it the word length is 8 bit everything looks absolutely fine i don't want to change anything here as soon as i select the uart asynchronous mode you can see pa2 and pa3 pin is already selected here into the chip right so that means they are configured and since we are using an led to light up on our stm32 microcontroller we will going to click this pa5 pin because that's where the built-in led is and i am also going to connect an external led to the pa5 pin so let me configure into the gpio output mode for this pa5 pin okay so this led will light up when the light intensity data of an ldr will drop down to certain limit so that's basically what all it is once this is done then we have to generate the code so on the top left corner you can see there is this button device configuration tool code generation so let me click on that and then click on yes and this will generate a code for us so let's give a couple of seconds so you can see the project is created for us here is a main.c file so we have to add a couple of include statement for us so hash include and we have to add std io.h standard header input output header then i also need to add include statement where i'm using string header file because i will be using some functions from the string library it's a c standard library by the way then i have to make some variable right a private variable so i have to see where i can define the private variables here so you can see user code begin a private variable and i'm going to create a variable u int 16 underscore t because i'm making an integer 16 bit unsigned variable because the data coming will be a 12 bit data because of the adc resolution is a 12 bit i need 16 bit registers to hold so i'm going to make this variable as a lux because light intensity is measured into the unit lux luminescence and then i also need to create one character buffer to store the data and i will call it as a character uh, buffer message and i would like to make the size of 20 character bytes right so character is one byte so that's what all it is and then i'm going to scroll down and in a main function where the code execution start i'm not going to write anything here i would directly jump into the while loop because that's what it executes over and over again as soon as we upload the code into the stm32 microcontroller if you want to see the configuration of an adc you can scroll down here and you can see there is an adc initialization and uh, you can see all the parameters that we have set up a couple of minutes before and then you can see here is the configuration so we are using the adc channel 0 rank 1 and all other things so this is basically the good use of stm32 cube id to generate the code for us but let's just write a logic here into this never ending while loop so i'm going to write here hall because we are using hall library hall adc underscore start control space and then i would going to say hall adc start and i'm going to pass the adc handle adc1 so this basically start the adc on our stm32 microcontroller once we start the adc then we have to say hall underscore ADC underscore poll for conversion because we are using a polling method uh, there are two ways you can convert your adc data using stm32 microcontroller one is a polling method the other one is an interrupt method in this project i'm using polling because it's a simple we will be keep polling the data from the microcontroller for the adc conversion so let's pass the handle adc handle adc1 and then the timeout i would like to make it as a 20 milliseconds right so that's how we will going to use the polling method to convert the adc data now i would say lux value is equals to because i want to store the adc value into this lux variable which is a 16 bit unsigned integer and then i would have to say hall underscore adc underscore get and the control space i don't remember everything so i use ide intelligence and then you can see we have this now i think require the ampersand right if you just press control space you can see and percent right so just make sure you don't make such a small mistakes but this function this api hall adc get value will get the adc value from the adc channel 0 that's the adc1 and then it will store it into this lux variable now i would going to use sprintf okay and here i'm going to store this value lux value into the message buffer that we created okay and then to look a little bit better i would like to say light is equals to and then i would going to say percent h u because we have to pass the variable so this variable lux is unsigned integer which is a 16 bit and for 16 bit integer to pass we have to use this percent h u and then i have to say slash r for carriage return and slash n for new line so every time when the adc data will be read from the ldr sensor light dependent resistor which is a 
light intensity it will be printed on to the new line on a serial terminal software so once this is done then i would going to say comma and then i would going to pass the variable lux so this is how the data that is stored into this lux variable will be stored into this message character buffer okay and now to print the data on a serial terminal software i have to say hall underscore uart underscore transmit because we have to use the serial monitor and serial uart and then i'm going to pass the first parameter as the uart2 handle and then i have to just say here make a little bit of space i have and then I have to say u int 8 underscore t because it's an unsigned integer and I would like to make it as a pointer and then I would say message because here we have to create a you know pointer that points to the message buffer and the size I'm going to use strlan function from the string library you now get the point why I added string dot h header file and then I'm going to say mst message and then the timeout that's basically I'm going to make whole underscore max control space i don't remember everything as i said before so it's better to press control space and use the intelligence of an ide so here we will going to print the light intensity onto the serial monitor now i don't want to continuously print on serial monitor so i'm going to put a little delay here all delay and i'm going to print it on every half a second so 500 milliseconds is good enough as a delay and uh, if i want i can just hit one enter and create a little bit of space here now to see whether i have any error or warning i'm going to build this code here so click on top left corner build hammer icon and let's see if i have any error or warning so as you can see i have zero error and zero warning looks fine for now and let's upload the code on stm32 nuclear board so on the top menu bar you have this run button so let me click on run button here and you can see this dialog box pops up and then we have to click on ok and this will you can see in lower right corner it says launching and zero percent and this is this shows the how many percentage of the code is uploading so let's wait for 100 percent so now the code is uploaded so you look at this download verified successfully let's set up the socket so let me take the ldr so i'm going to place on my breadboard something like this then i need to take one resistor i'm going to take 10 kilo ohm resistor i'm going to connect like this on a breadboard so the one end of the ldr and one end of the resistor will be the free end of the ldr will going to connect to the 3.3 volt onto the stm32 nuclear board okay something like this and then the common pin between ldr and the resistor this one will going to connect to the a0 pin that's a pa0 adc0 pin okay and then the free end of the resistor this one because these are vertically short right and that would connect to the ground pin on the stm32 nuclear board so this is how we're going to set up the socket so here's our ldr so this is how it's going to be the final setup now it's a time for us to check on a serial monitor whether we receive the data so if you don't know the com port you can just quickly open device manager on your computer and uh, then you have to go to the ports now as you can see on a port section we can see my stm32 nuclear board detected as a com7 so i know now the com port so i'm going to open the putty software here and i'm going to select the serial and then i'm going to select the com7 because that's where our stm32 nuclear board is connected to the computer and then the speed is a baud rate basically if you remember in our UART setting 115200 that's the baud rate default baud rate and then I'm going to click on open and now you can see the light intensity data start printing okay so uh, this value will be different for all of us because uh, right now I'm sitting in a place where I have a lot of lights around me the ambient light so as you can see the value starts coming here so when I cover the sensor with my hand you can see the value drop down and it dropped down even below 2000 when I remove my hand you can see it goes up more than 2000 let me cover the sensor back again you can see again drop down below 2000 when I remove my hand you can see again goes up more than 2000 okay now to check whether I can able to control the LED uh, connected to PA5 pin that's basically a built-in LED so we have to go to the code again and then we have to write a logic and we have to use the GPIO pin so I'm going to add one if statement where I would say if lux is less than 2000 because we know that when we cover the sensor with the hands the light intensity value drops below 2000 okay so that means the darkness around the sensor so if you cover the sensor then it's a darkness the dark around the sensor so we check if the lux value is less than 2000 then we want to say that hall underscore gpio underscore let's say 
control space and right pin and then i have to say that uh, the gpioa because the pa5 pin that's where the built-in led or our external led that we have connected on the gpio port a that's why we have to say the gpioa and then we have to set the pin so gpio pin control space and then i have to select the gpio pin 5 and then pin state because i want to turn on the led so i'm going to say gpio underscore pin control space and then i'm going to select the set so that's basically turn on the led connected to pa5 pin okay so if the lux value is less than 2000 then turn on the led let me copy because i love the magic of copy and paste and then i'm going to say else so i make the spelling mistake e l s e else and then i'm going to paste the code here and gpio uh, write function and then instead of set now to turn off the led i'm going to say reset and control space and this is all what it is now one thing though very important we have to remove this delay function here let me just remove delay otherwise this will take a long time for us to make a decision and this whole delay i'm going to put it here but half a second is too much otherwise the led will light up but it will take some time to react so i'm going to make this delay as let's say uh, 200 milliseconds i mean it's still not good but just to demonstrate into the video output this delay would make a little bit of sense for me okay but for you when you try and test just delete the delay you don't need delay basically so let me click on this build icon on top left corner hammer and you can see zero error zero warning let me click on the run button on the top menu bar to upload the code you can see the code upload starts in a lower right corner let's wait for download verified so as you can see the download is verified successfully that means the code is uploaded onto the microcontroller and then we have to put one uh, led so here's the red led i'm going to connect to a5 pin so let me count the pin one two three four the fourth is the ground from the right so this is how it's going to connect to the pa5 pin i can minimize the screen and you can see now the light intensity value is more than 2000 so it's about 2000 let me cover the sensor and the led lights up because the value dropped down below 2000 let me remove my hand and led goes off you can see when I cover the sensor, LED light up and the value goes below 2000. So in the next video, we will going to learn about a multi-channel ADC where I will going to show you how you can connect a multiple sensor by using this feature multi-channel ADC on STM32 microcontroller. So code will be a little bit longer and we will going to use a DMA in that example project. And I don't want to make this video long. I want to make it with the reasonable size of the video. That's why I want to cover it into the next video lesson. You will check the link in the video description for all the related videos and you can check out our other STM32 microcontroller program lessons i hope you have found this video educational and entertaining we'll see us into the next video lesson bye bye for now